Welcome back to the channel and today I'm going to be showing you as a beginner how to do cloth simulations in Blender 4.2. Not only am I going to show you how to make this really nice and simple cloth simulation, I'm also going to be showing you how to make this completely procedural cloth material. Um, so you can see these are the notes here, but we're going to make it all one neat little package. So what you have to work with then is a little RGB color slider. So you can change your cloth to whatever color you want. And then you can come here to this value here and you can adjust the scale of your texture to whatever you want. So pretty cool stuff. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and um, I will be uploading the final um, blend file here to my Patreon as well. So let's jump in and do a really cool looking cloth simulation for people who are still new at Blender. So let's jump into Blender and with a new scene, um, let's just select the default cube and I'm gonna show you something pretty cool here. If you tab into edit mode, and with your cube selected, you can just right click and click on subdivide. And you can go here to your subdivision tab and let's type in something like 50. Okay, maybe that's a bit too much. I might go 30. Okay, yeah, 30 seems fine. And then if you wanna turn this into a more round object, you can just go Shift, Alt, and S. So Shift, Alt, S, move your mouse, and then you round it out. How cool is that? So now let's go back into object mode. And hopefully you guys can use this little trick in the future for making a sphere. So we're gonna select the sphere right click and go shade smooth. And for now I'm just gonna select the other objects and just delete them, just so we have a clean scene here. And the sphere that we've created here is gonna be our interaction object. It's where the cloth is gonna kind of fold over. So let's select it and let's go over to our physics. Now our physics are where all of our um, things that have to do with physics live and their properties. So you can go here, it's actually named if you hover over it. And it's got a little symbol here. It's just a particle spinning around another particle because we're dealing with the physics of um, particles here. So let's go ahead and we're gonna give this a collision. The reason we want it to have a collision is because we want the cloth to interact with it. So it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, you don't have to worry too much about these settings. This is more if you wanna do really specific things with particles later on. Um, but with cloth, just out of the box, these settings are generally fine. So now that we have a object for our cloth to interact with, let's make some cloth. So we're gonna go Shift A. We're gonna go to our mesh options. We're gonna add in a plane. We're gonna go G, Z and move this plane up. And then we're gonna go S and scale this plane up till it's um, about this big, something like that. Now another thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go Shift A and you're gonna apply the scale. And the reason we're doing that, whenever we scale in object mode, um, our transforms here are affected and it's going to look at that when it's running our simulation. So we always want to go control A or command A and apply the scale when scaling when we're doing our cloth simulation. So now with this scaled, let's tab into edit mode. If we want this to be able to fold like cloth, it needs more topology. So we're going to right click and go subdivide and with our subdivide here, um, we're going to go a little bit higher here. So let's go with 30 or maybe even 45. I think 45 should be good. And let's go over back into object mode. And now let's go to our physics and let's click on cloth and make sure you are on frame one where the simulation begins. And now if you hit the space bar, you're gonna see a cloth simulation. Now some of the things you're gonna notice here is that the cloth is actually going through itself. And this is normal because if you go over to your cloth settings with your cloth selected, there's gonna be a section here called collisions. And by default, to save on simulation time, it turns off self-collision. Um, but once you turn that on and you go back to frame one, um, it's now going to simulate more accurately and you're not going to have the cloth going through itself, but it's going to take a little bit longer. So let's go to frame one and hit the space bar. And now you can see we have this beautiful self-interaction. So let's just quickly pause, right-click and go shade smooth. And then let's also go to our modifiers and go add modifier and click search and type in sub. And let's give that a subdivision surface. So now it's really looking nice, okay? But one of the things that a lot of people um, might not know about when they get into cloth simulation is baking. Because if you actually grab this now and you go back to your physics panel, um, we can go to frame one every time, change the settings and then just run it. But at a certain point um, to work more efficiently, we wanna kind of bake this simulation into our blend file. So first of all, make sure you've saved this project. And then you're gonna go over to your cache. And then the start and end values here are just the amount of time you wanna cache this. So for example, we wanna start at one. And let's just say we only want a cloth simulation to go to about 120 frames. There's no need to do the whole 250 unless you have a specific reason to do that. And 
In fact, I'm gonna come here to my end frame value on the timeline. I'm just gonna make that 150 frames, okay? So now let's go ahead over here under our cache and click on bake. And now it's gonna bake this simulation into our blend file. And there we have it. We now have this nice cloth simulation. So let's go ahead and um, just run through it and kind of just grab it at a certain point where it's looking kind of cool. So I'm gonna to come to about frame 46. In the front orthographic view, I'm gonna go Shift A. I'm gonna to go to my options here, add in a camera. And then let's just go G, Y and move that back. So we just got a camera facing from the front like so. And then let's go to our render settings and just give this under the engine, let's make this cycles. If you have a GPU, I always recommend you use it. It will speed things up. And then you're gonna to go to your render settings here and let's just make the max samples 50. Should be fine, especially now that Blender has the noising. And let's go Shift A, let's also go to our light options. We're gonna add in a simple area light here. And let's just go to our front view and just go G, move it over, R to rotate. And let's go to our light properties and I think a strength of 300 should be fine. And let's go with a size of three meters. I'm gonna move this back more. And then in the top view, I'm gonna go Shift D to duplicate that light. Rotate it in, like so. So we've got three lights kind of facing it like this. And then Shift D, I'm gonna move one behind there. And this one, I'm gonna give it a size of five meters, but I'm gonna give it a strength of 2000. And that's gonna give us some nice rim lighting. So if we go into our camera view and we go Z and go rendered, um, this is what you see now, something like this. Okay. And I might also just grab this one we've duplicated at the back. I might just duplicate it again, kind of have two kind of a little bit offset like that. And then shift D and just have one kind of coming from the very front. And this one, I might take the strength down to 1000. Okay, there we go. Now we've got some nice lighting here. It's gonna look even better once we add the materials. So let's select the cloth itself. Let's go over to our shading workspace and let's click new and let's just go cloth, giving it a name, oops, there we go. And I've come up with a little cloth shader that I'm gonna show you how to make here, which gives us quite a bit of control and it just looks really nice. So we're gonna be working with texture. So let's go into our camera view here. Let's press Z and let's go to the material preview, which it's in at the moment. And let's go shift A search and get a wave texture. So type in wave and get a wave texture. And let's take this wave texture for now and just plug the color into the base color. And now you can see we have these wavy lines here. But what we want to do is we want to go shift a search and type in texture coordinate. And yes, you could use the node wrangler add on to do this um, quickly, but it's, it's fine. I'm just going with the tutorial here. I'm going to take the object and just plug it into the vector. Um, actually we want to, we, I guess you could technically work with the object, but to be more accurate, we're going to use the UV and plug it into the vector here. And essentially what that means, if you go over to your UV editing here, with this cloth selected, you can see that the plane we used came pre UV unwrap and that's going to be really handy here. So if we go back to our shading workspace, we can take advantage of that layout. So let's come over here and go shift a search and type in mapping, place it on this cable. So this is UV is going to the vector. So what we can do here is we can take the scale of our wave texture here. Let's take that up to 75 for start. In fact, to make this give us a bit more control, we're gonna drag on the scale and type in value and just get a value node here so we can kind of um, do it to both at the same time because we're gonna take this wave texture, we're gonna go Shift D to duplicate it. I'm gonna place this one down here and then we're gonna take this mapping, we're gonna go Shift D to duplicate that, place it down here and this vector is gonna go into the vector of the bottom wave. And then we're gonna take that same UV coordinate and put it into the vector of this mapping. Okay, so just like that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down to this mapping over here, the bottom one, and let's just quickly take this color and plug it into the base color of the principled. So what we're gonna do with this one is we're gonna come here to the Z and turn it 90 degrees. So it's running this way. So now we have one um, wave that's running upwards and one that's running down. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take both of these inputs, the color from both wave textures, and we're gonna go Shift A search and get a mix and let's just get mix converter. And let's take the color here and plug it into A and the color from the wave texture here and plug it into B. And make sure it's set to float. And let's just take this to about 0.55. And then we're gonna take this result and plug it into the base color of our principled. And now you can see this is the sort of thing we're having over here. The sort of dotted effect. 
Now if you want more control over that, what you can do is you can come between these wave textures here and go shift a search and get a color ramp. Place it over here. And now you can kind of dial in some of this a little bit. Um, I would actually switch these two around over here and make this one a little bit darker in value, like so. And then you can duplicate this node, shift D and place it on the bottom cable. And then put the black value down here, take the white value up and then just adjust it a little bit. And that gives you a little bit more control with this pattern here by how you adjust these values. But what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take this, we're gonna go shift A search and get a bump. And let's take that result, plug it into the height and then plug this normal into the normal of our principled. Let's give this a strength of 0.3. And then let's go shift A search and get a color ramp again oops a color ramp let's take this output from the mix here plug it into the factor and let's take this color and plug it into the base color of the principled and now we could actually come here and give color directly to this one over here so we can grab this and give it color but it would be more interesting if we just left this as two separate values like a black a more black and a lighter value here and then we're gonna go shift a search and get a mix color, place it over here. And then we're gonna drag on a B input and we're gonna type in RGB. And let's get an RGB color over here. And let's make the um, mixing blending mode here. Let's make that overlay. And now we can come and make this any color we want over here and any value we want. So I'm gonna go Z and just go rendered to see this a bit better. And you can always come here and adjust some of these um, values. But now we have an easy way of just adding any color we want to this. And you can mess around here with the factor as well. Pretty cool. Okay, so now we have that material done. Let's just take this RGB and drag it all the way to the end here and take this value and these are the two things which we're going to be working with. So we can go shift A search and just get a frame over here, place it here and then place both of these inside of that frame. And now we can take this frame and under our properties here just go and give it a color. There we go. And this little box is the only thing you need to worry about with this new cloth shader. All of these things here, let's just grab all of them, everything except the um, output here and let's just go control G or I think Alt G. So we're going to go Alt G and with them all active, we're going to go Control G and now that's its own group and we can just press Tab to go back out. And now all we have here is this nice little node package and just these um, two we have to worry about here. So we have the RGB, so we can come here and change the color to anything we want and we can take the scale and make it anything we want as well on the um, texture of the fabric here. So that is a nifty little shader. So let's go into our camera view and let's go to frame one. Let's go over to our output. Let's go to the output settings here and just select our desktop as a destination. You can go here to your file format and make it FFmpeg video. And under your encoder, you can make the container an MP4. So now if you wanted to, you could go render and render animation and it'll render it out to this destination here. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial on um, cloth simulations in Blender. At this point, you could also, if you wanted to, optionally just add in a plane as a background, scale it up, add whatever you want to that as far as materials go. Um, you can give that plane a material, make it darker. Um, the sky is the limit really when it comes to how you want to present this. You can add in a nice point light and kind of take the power up and the radius. That kind of gives you some more rim lighting at the back there. Um, but go ahead, try out different things, try out different colors, saturations, and I'll see you guys next time. I will also be uploading this final result to my Patreon. Um, so I'll see you guys next time and thank you for watching.